What is going on, comic fam? It's your boy, the Bearded Comic Bro, and I am joined by comic creator Brian Hill. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? Man, I'm good. I'm excited. You you have been in the comic game for a while. With You did Batman and Outsiders. You've done Postal. You've done American Carnage. Killmonger did a Fallen Angels. Like One of my favorite series recently, Chariot, and now you're working on Blade. So like, wow, you've got a lot of stuff out there. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I kind of do. I, you know, it's funny, man. Um, I, I've never really felt like part of comic book culture, really. You know, like, not that like people have been unwelcoming, you know what I mean? But yeah. um, I just, with my schedule and screenwriting and TV and, you know, I'm focusing on directing now and all that. I don't have a ton of time, so I don't do a lot of monthlies, you know. No. It's, it's not something you're going to see from me a lot. So I kind of get in where I fit in. You know, the thing with Blade was, it, you know, it's a character I really like. And they were going to give me some space to kind of go off the chain. So that really appealed to me. Um, but yeah, I guess I have gotten a decent <laughs> amount of work out. You know, I'll, it's weird, man. Like, you just kind of get these things written and you turn them in. They come out and you sign them and all that. You don't really think about what kind of stack you're building. But I guess it's like a decent sized stack or something. Yeah, it is. So... I mean, you, like you said, you, um, you do screenwriting, you do a bunch of other stuff and dabble into it. How, how did you get into creating comics? Uh, well, I mean, I, I kind of always wanted to do comics, okay. um, but I didn't know how to get into it. Right. So like when I went to film school, I went to NYU. It's really in the film. I thought I was going to be an indie filmmaker. You know, I thought I'd be like a New York guy. I'm, I'm an LA guy now, but I thought I was going to be like a New York guy making like $2 million movies you know somebody's addicted to heroin or yeah you know somebody's sister's a prostitute you know what i mean like i just thought i was gonna be making these like you know kind of carriage driven indie dramas or what have you and uh started writing bigger high concept genre things because i liked those things and i figured well maybe i can sell one of these and like you know get an apartment out in brooklyn or something and and figure my life out um uh, and then I came out to Hollywood when I sold a thing and kind of kept the machine going there. And now I'm a little more Hollywood. I'm a little more like high concept genre, character driven stuff. You know, I, I haven't really been in the indie space too much. I might have a couple things in the indie space in 2024. But uh, with the comic book thing, I couldn't get it. I mean, I, I sent letters. I had lunch with people. You know, I had people at Marvel telling me I'd never worked there. I had, you know, uh, didn't even get that much from D.C., um, and I had no idea. Uh, and then I met Matt Hawkins when I was in LA over at Top Cat. And uh, Matt was a cool dude. Um, and Rob Levin was over there at the time. And I got a co-write with Rob on a thing. Ron Mars was over there. Ron kind of helped me out. Yep. You know, gave me like a drawbridge uh, into it. Matt gave me a couple of little projects. And then he and I worked on a book called Postal. Uh, and I co-wrote that for like the first like 12 and i think the the rest of it uh i just kind of did solo um and i think after you know didn't doing that having a book coming out every month that kind of thing so i think we got up to like 24 in that run or something like yeah. you know it wasn't a super long run but like that's a decent run of indie comic you know oh yeah and um you know enough to get like an omnibus and feel like you did something so uh yeah that's kind of how i got in um but i honestly don't think i would have gotten opportunities in comics had i not done some hollywood work you know, oh. sort of like, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, it, it, comics is kind of like, there's a girl at, at in high school you really like, right? And, and she's a little fancy. She's not the fanciest one in high school, <laughs> but, you know, she's a little fancy. Right? Yeah. Um, she got options and she just, she does not see any. She just doesn't see you, you know, until in science class, you get partnered up with like the head cheerleader on a project. And then... And then, you know, uh, Jody comic book sees you hanging out with the head cheerleader, making her laugh. And then Jody comic was like, wait, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> wait, maybe, 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 maybe this dude's all right. You know what I mean? Like that. So like, so like, that's kind of how comics was for me. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, like no one cared who I was until I put on the mask. <laughs> Oh man, that's such a great <laughs> illustration of that. Well, let's, you mentioned Postal, and yeah. that was that's such a long. It was you know for indie comics, it is a long run. I mean, that's almost what two sure. years if you're doing a monthly. Yeah, uh, it was something like that. It was it was yeah, it was about two years. Me and Isaac Goodhart 
uh, kind of doing the whole thing. Isaac's a really good guy. Um, uh, he's working DC now, I think, doing stuff. Uh, yeah. So it was about two years for sure. Yeah, and like what I love is it's a unique concept. If someone hasn't, um, you know, checked, I don't even know why I'm about to explain it. You're right here. <laughs> what was postal like? Because it's such a unique story. I think um, that I think was really cool to have people gravitate towards your work then. Well, you know, it was really Matt Hawkins had the initial concept. You know, he had okay. this idea about this town that was kind of an off the grid town where everybody in it had committed some kind of crime. Some were fugitives, some weren't, but it was kind of this closed in small town community where everyone had a secret, right? Well, that's a good fertile ground for storytelling. And he really wanted uh, the the post office guy, who's the son of the mayor, you know, he's like, and what if he's on like the spectrum, like the Asperger spectrum or something like that? And, you know, he just had like feelings. A lot of times the story just starts with feelings. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, there's a thing, there's a car and maybe maybe it's, there's some neon in there. You know, like it, you just kind of, you start with the vibe and then you sort of figure out what the story is. After the vibe. So he shared that with me and he was like, I don't know if you think you can do something with this. And I hadn't really written something that was character driven and real grounded. You know, I mean, I had come into Hollywood on a sci-fi thriller, uh, you know, and I was writing like sci-fi movies and, yep. and pitching on like horror stuff and big action stuff. And I wasn't really doing like a, you know, true detective kind of vibe, you know, and I, and I felt like well, I could bring something to this. I grew up in Missouri. You know, I know I know a little bit about tent preachers and corn pone and, mm -hmm. and, you know, lonely trees with dead people tied to them, you know, mm -hmm. Um and yeah, so I, I sent him a couple pages on, well, this is what I would do with it. Yeah. You know, so I'd break it down and he liked that. I uh, created a couple characters uh, in there, um, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the love interest, you know, for Mark um, in that book. You know, that was something I wanted to kind of put in there, you know. And um, yeah, and and he took to it. Yeah. Uh, and we just kind of, you know, went from there, you know, it's a little bit of like a Taylor Sheridan kind of thing before Taylor Sheridan was a thing, you know. Yeah, I, what, I, what I love is, <clears throat> that's why I like doing these interviews, because, you know, I was familiar with you know, some of your work with Marvel and then DC, and then as, you know, I guess the Chariot himself was one of my favorite books when it, what, two years ago when it came out? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I started to read, Thank and you. Postal was one Thank I you, hadn't read yet, and same with right. American Carnage, so I was like, I dove into both of those, uh, and so good, so. Well, let's talk a little bit about blade um you yeah. got to mention at the beginning that it's you know marvel is kind of gonna let you run with it a little bit so what's your what was your pitch or your idea for blade when you had the chance to say hey this is what i want to do i mean when will moss reached out to me editor over at marvel you know he just kind of asked me hey would you be interested in writing a, a blade series we're going to do a number one and we're going to kind of you know do all this stuff and uh, i told him I'm like well yes but i i want to kind of go back to basics in a way huh. you know i i, I want to get back to like the kind of action horror you know he he talks some yang and drives a cool car and you know messes messes up vampires and and other other ghoulies and that kind of thing and just kind of you know give that mainline blade experience you know like like yeah. a book that sort of felt like the opening five minutes of the first movie you know which yeah. to me is like peak perfect blade right you don't get better blade than that um and they were into it you know, they were they were kind of into the idea of that uh, and and that's really where it started. And we just kind of started talking ideas about what I wanted to do, you know, and um, uh, that, that's kind of, you know, what the book is. It's sort of like this kind of cinematic on paper exploration of the character. Um, I got a big budget because it's a comic book. So we globe trot a little bit. We got some new characters in there um, that I that I created that I think give us windows into him in different ways. Um, but I, yeah, I just was in the mood, you know, a lot of times it's just a mood thing, man. Like, okay. you know, if somebody, sometimes someone will reach out to me and I'm just like, yeah, I, I don't really feel that right now. Like, that's not really where, where I am rhythmically, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but I just, it just happened to line up with where my sensibilities were. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I, I think I can do a good job with this because I don't think I can do a great job at something, um, or at least, I can't do what what uh, I can't access what I think are the best parts of my my creativity. Then mm -hmm. I don't take the job, right? Because right. I feel like I'm just sitting in a chair, or someone else can sit in, you know. Yeah. Um, but if someone, you know, offers me something and I get those good butterflies in the stomach, you know, you're like, yep. okay, 
I'm kind of feeling this. Let me listen to some music. Let me go for a walk. Let me hit the heavy bag a little bit, see what comes up. And uh, yeah, I just sort of sunk into it. Mm. So when you get something like, um, you know, where Postal was, you know, was an idea that you guys started to work on together of, you know, original ideas, original property and stuff. But when you get something presented to you like Blade, how do you mm. go about approaching it, bringing, you know, your own flavor, your own style to something that's been done before? Well, I mean, that's an interesting idea, right? Like, so I don't really consciously think about it. Okay. In, in those terms. Yeah. Right. Um, it's sort of like if you sang Stairway to Heaven and I sang Stairway to Heaven, it would it would be the same song, but it would sound different. Yeah. Right. Like, so so that just happens automatically, I think, um, okay. unless you're actively trying to mirror someone else's style or voice, which I never do. Okay. You know? and, and I don't know what my style is. Right. It's funny, like back in, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I typed into chat GPT. I was like, describe Brian Edward Hill as a writer. Right. And I was just curious what AI would kind of pull down from the internet yeah. and pull down like a bunch of stuff in this description, you know, and I was like, huh, didn't really consider, you know, all the maybe, maybe that's true. I don't know. Like some yeah. of that feels right. Like I never really look at myself that way. Um, so I don't really think about what's come before. Okay. Um, and in like a in a way where it's threatening like my voice. You know, I do I you know Jason Aaron's work because that was recent. I admire Jason as a writer very much, you know, just to kind of see like what they were doing, look at the bloodline right. stuff, just want to see like what was going on. Uh, but for me, the the process is really it's you know, it's a it's a one on one between me and the story I'm trying to tell. I, I tend to think in images because I'm a filmmaker. So yeah. I see pictures first. You know, and you start pulling the pictures down and then your voice kind of comes through that like organically. You know, I tell people all the time that style is about the reduction of choices. Mm. Style isn't about what you're going to do. It's about what you're not going to do. Right. Mm. So like Scorsese says, I'm not going to cut on this shot. We're just going to follow Ray Liotta and Lorraine Bracco into this club. Yeah. And that's going to be the shot. Right. So it's the reduction of things. Mm that gives things style right it could be the reduction of color it could be the reduction of certain camera angles you know um so it's a lot about what what you're kind of not gonna do you know and what i didn't want to do was something that felt um you know kind of so mired in continuity that there'd be nothing there for new readers you know i i didn't want to do something that was trying too hard to make the book safe you know um to, to shave all the corners off you know like a, so yeah and and you start making those choices and working from that place i think the work is going to have its own voice for better or worse yeah well i i appreciate what you said about you know allowing it to space to have new readers come on because that's something i've been trying to do as a reader myself is explore characters that i haven't gotten to dig into because right. i mean let's be honest there's so many comics and characters out there you can't and blade was one that i haven't read a lot of blade comic books so i was like all right i'm going in full fully not no, i saw mm -hmm. the movies and that's about my extent of the that's knowledge about it, so, right that's about it yeah and so it was really like but i didn't feel lost i had a basis of who blade was as a character and i think it it is something for new readers that they can appreciate but i'm assuming then someone that's picked up blade in the past is still is appreciating what you're doing because of how you're sticking with like you said, what you want to make the Blade story be about. Well, I, I hope so. I, ho I hope they do. You know, I mean, look, continuity is important. Yeah. Um, and because I look at it like people invest their time into reading a story, right? Well, they invest their money and their time, but time is really just money in a different form. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, money's just time in a different form. So when people invest their time into something and they take it into themselves and they they really sort of pay attention to its details when someone comes in and just kind of wipes the slate of that it's almost like they're just you know kind of disrespecting the time everybody spent right. you know and even if you don't want to head in that direction you know like to to refute it to pretend that it doesn't exist you know like that's the kind of stuff i would never do so right. you may not see bloodline in the first arc but it doesn't mean that she's not out there you know yeah. i'm not saying that's not a thing you know yeah. um and i think that's really important you know as a pact between uh readers and creators especially in, in like comics you know and tv is a little different film is yeah. a little different but in, in in comics i think that's really important so um so i do want to respect that continuity but simultaneously 
I get frustrated if I see a movie, you know, uh, oh, that was cool. Maybe there's a book. And then I go into the comic book shop. And then when I get the book, the character that was in the movie isn't the same character that's in the book. You know, like, yep. can't get that experience. You know, you know, it, you know, yeah. like, you, you, you don't want to like see a Batman movie and then go to a comic book store to get more Batman. And then Bruce Wayne's not even Batman. Right. You know, yep. What, what, yep. what's going on here? Like, why is it like this? What I can't make heads or tails of this. It's, the, the, it's too much inside baseball. So, uh, you have to you have to balance both wings that airplane where you definitely respect the continuity and you engage it um, in the in your story towards what you feel will be the best effect. Yeah. But I also don't want just like someone like oh Blade I remember Blade I watched that movie way back in the day or I just caught that gen- that thing on like TNT yeah. and it was cool. Um, I oh they're doing a book let me read this and I wanted to still feel like Blade. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so- so that's that's the thing you know like, and so with, with issue one i very much wanted to tell people like yo this is blade now it gets yeah. weird it's got to get weirder you know because it's a comic book and i can kind of do what i want right and there's going to be some cool guest stars and and all that types of stuff but like uh for the first issue i just really wanted to like kind of hold people down and be like listen there's gonna be some blade yeah start off in a club and there's some vampires and then he slices them up with the sword. So, you know, I got <laughs> <That's> you. <right. laughs> I got you on this one. You know? Yeah. It's it's so good. Like so is this um is this a ongoing series? Is it a mini, a maxi, or is it no, kind of a wait? It's an scene? ongoing. Okay. It's an ongoing. Uh, you know, we're gonna kind of keep it going. Uh yep. as long as we can, as long as there's interest right. in it. Um, you know, there's always moving parts with these big companies, you know, you never know. Like, you know, you know, never know how many of them they need and and all that stuff. You just gotta write uh and try to do the best you can to make the best work you can uh and it, but yeah i mean it, there's no there's no hard end date yeah. on it cool. you know i mean i don't know maybe they'll hire me to like you know direct transformers 10 or something like that and then i don't know i have to <laughs> i have to hand the baton off to somebody dope but we will see nice so when you said marvel approached you about doing a blade book do they kind of already have a team in mind of like artists and stuff or is that something then once they had you like they're like hey is there someone you want to work with how did that kind of the team come about well i tend to let marvel or dc on a big two thing you know give me a list of people they want to work with okay because it's a little bit different right when you're working in an indie comic that's a different pace different clip different kind of work working on a big two comic there's a little more machinery in place you know, because it's, it's not just your book, it's the other books and they may interface with your book or something happens over here and you need to react to that. And then there's the blood moon, don't forget the blood moon, whatever the thing's going on, right? So there's all these moving parts and uh, the companies have already kind of sifted through artists and figured out like who can work at the pace, you know, who's fluid enough, who who's all this, you know, um, they've worked with people before, so they kind of know strengths and weaknesses and and that kind of thing. So when when they generate a list, I know that like they're cool with that list. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, for the, from that list, I'll take a look and be like, well, I respond to this person's work. And I really like Elena's work a lot. Like Elena has a very strong like graphic design quality to her work, yeah. um, which has always been kind of something I've gravitated to. You know, chariots like that, right? Like Pr- Priscilla Petraeus, right? She has a very strong graphic design quality to it. Like every panel could be a uh, streetwear, like yeah. you know like crew neck or something like that right like and and i vibe with that because i ultimately think that comics and film and even tv these are visual mediums yeah you know and they need to work with the with the images yeah right? like, and so um I, I look for on those lists like who's an artist that i think can tell a story and if i just get rid of all the words would you kind of know what was going on mm. you know yeah um and and that's the kind of person I like to work with. Yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, while writers get a, a lot of credit for being like the, the crafts people of the experience, I think the the real politic fact is, you know, comics are a visual medium yeah. and the script is supposed to launch great images. Mm-hmm. You know, just like a screenplay is supposed to be the garden ground that you can grow cinema from. You know, a screenplay is not a destination. It's just here's a here's a path, right? And we gotta 
bring the actors in, camera in, and now let's see what we can do here. Let's see what kind of images we can make to tell the story. Um, so same kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so generally, you know, I've never had an issue finding somebody that I thought I could vibe with. And, uh, and, and Marvel's always come through with really, really great choices. Yeah. I never knew I needed a crew neck of something with something from Chariot on it until you just said that. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, she just got that vibe, you know? Yeah, like, it's, it's so good. It's 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 real strong, right? And and uh, and when you're doing a book, you know, where you're, you know, you kind of want it to be stylish, right? There's all yeah. there's a again because I start with images, right? Everything starts with a vibe. Um, so I really appreciate that uh, in a piece of material. I mean, I you know when I think about comics I read as a kid, it's the uh, the images still have have themselves burned into my mind. Right. You know, I'm still chasing some of those panels, you know, that, that I remember. I can't even remember what book it was from, but I can remember. You know, a silhouette of Wolverine bare chested getting an arrow shot through his chest. I don't know what book that's from. Probably yeah. some Frank Miller, this or that. I don't remember. You know, yeah. you know, bare chested arrow stuck in the chest. Probably Frank. I don't remember. But like, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, this is how my mind wraps around all of it. Yeah. Well, I I would be remiss if I didn't at least ask real quick. Um, intentions of still maybe exploring more in Chariot, or is that are you kind of? Oh yeah. Okay. So um I definitely have two more volumes of story okay. uh to tell there. Um and uh really excited about where it could go in the second volume. I haven't really talked to AWA about doing another volume of it. Um and I wouldn't do it without Priscilla. So there's obviously right. like a schedule thing that has to line up. Um just to be frank, I don't really understand um I shouldn't say understand it all depends on whether or not that fits into their business model yeah because uh you know i'll just be you know open so cherry when cherry came out it got optioned um for like film tv development uh and that may have been you know like the destination for the project you know i you know mm -hmm. i don't know i guess it would all depend on whether or not publishing another volume of something that's already been option option right yeah. Uh, does that? I mean, as a as a writer who likes being on a shelf, likes creating these books, I definitely would want to do one. I guess it's up to the publisher about whether or not putting more resources into an IP that kind of already found a home makes more sense than putting resources into like a new IP to find it a new home. Right? Okay. So there's always that balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on a personal creative level, I definitely have more chariot to tell. You know, yeah. I mean, that's that's a that's a book I could probably keep on keep going for a good five years. Oh yeah. It, again, it was, it was one of those, I was picking up a lot of AWA stuff and that, that became one of a, my favorite from AWA, but my favorite book that year it came out. Cause it was, it was just so engaging. It was so unique. And like you said, the images Priscilla was like, Hey, they stick with you They're It's beautiful work. If people haven't read it yet. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Um, uh, you know, it, it's sometimes you just have a simple desire and I wanted to do a car thing. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I'm going to do a car thing, kind of like Knight Rider, kind of like Tron, but like cool, put a little Christine in there. You know, like, oh, what if a, what if Anna de Armas was the AI in your car and you had to go like mess some guys up? That sounds cool. <laughs> you know, and, and then that'll yep. be it. Like that'll be yeah. enough to get me to like sit down and start trying to write it and, and, and figure out the, figure out the jam. Yeah. So uh, I want to respect your time, but one of the yeah. last things I want to kind of ask you is, you know, as someone who's gotten to play in a lot of different sandboxes with like, you know, Blade and then, you know, Batman characters and things like that. When you're approached about something like that, do you kind of have ideas that you're like, if I ever get op an option to do a character like this, do you kind of have like a folder of ideas where you're like, I would love to do something like this? Or is it kind of just more when someone approaches you, you're like, eh, well, let's see if I have something. I mean, you know, like creatively, I guess you're always musing about this or that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, if they gave me Star Wars, I'd, I'd do this. You know, if they, okay. if they gave me Transformers, I, I'd do that. But like, I don't put a lot of energy into those thoughts mm. um, because it, I just, you know, there's a limit to how long, how long I'll let myself think about playing with someone else's toys yeah. unless they're handing me the toys, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like sometimes you have some things that you would do and sometimes you just have story stuff that 
you don't really know what you want to do with it, right? Yeah. You're just kind of interested in this. I'm interested in this. And, and uh, maybe I'll find a way to explore that in this thing or that thing. And then the company reaches out and says, hey, do you have an idea for, I'm just, you know, pulling out of that, like, do you have an idea for James Bond or something like that, right? Like, I'm not writing a James Bond book, but, <laughs> you know, um, I'd like to, though. Call me Dynamite. Yeah, um, that'd be sweet. <laughs> But, uh, but like someone's like, yeah, you gotta have an idea for Bond. And then like, well, you know, you were thinking about this, that maybe you were interested in, you know, arms dealing over here or soft criminal money, how it moves around the world or, you know, whatever it is. Right. You know, yeah. uh, um, you know, resource, you know, wars in Africa, you know, or rare earth minerals, you know, like you've just been doing some reading and you're like, there's a story in this thing somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And then someone, and then, and then they say a little bond thing. And you're like, all right, well, if I was going to do bond, you, you know, interfacing with some of the stuff I'm interested in, right. what would that story be? You know? Right. Um, and, and so that's how it kind of comes together. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's rare that I just don't have any kind of, you know, two sentence note thing in the journal or something on my hard drive that I can access when someone reaches out about a thing. Um, but it's not also not like I'm sitting on a Superman story right. that's all mapped out. I'm sitting on a Wonder Woman story that's all mapped out. No, not really. I mean, I just have like directions I might want to go given yeah. the opportunity to do this, do that. Nice. <laughs> well, again, I know you uh you got a lot of stuff that you're working on and you're um where where can people follow along with you and stay up to date with what you're creating, what you're doing? Oh, I'm an easy man to find. Um, so Twitter, X, Twixer, I don't know, whatever it's called. Um, uh, Elon Science Project. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's the best place to find me. It's at Brian Edward Hill. That's Brian with a Y. Um, that's probably the best place to holler at me. I'm also on Instagram, Brian E. Hill. Um, but I am not a regular instagrammer um because that just takes a step towards narcissism that i don't i'm i you don't care if i had a salad <laughs> you know like you don't care you know you don't you don't care about my iced coffee you know <laughs> you got iced coffee good good on you good for you <laughs> right um but i am i am there too uh but twitter is probably the best place to, to don't worry i'm not deleting my posts of my iced coffee this morning right now <laughs> now listen people <laughs> like 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 share share your life share the love you know the whole thing i just um yeah instagram i don't know i don't know what to do with it you know what i mean yeah. i don't know what that is i don't know what that is i don't know what that is i get well have is we're talking about blade and it's ongoing is there anything else that we you want to talk about that mentioned that to check out that we haven't gotten around to yet nothing i can talk about okay. but i i will tell people that i have a couple bigger announcements coming coming soon i suppose okay. um by the end of the year in the uh in the comic space so yeah just follow me on social media and and as i can talk about things i'll talk about them i mean sometimes they'll talk about them before they tell me i can you know um but uh You're like oh i guess i can say this i'm like oh that's out that's <laughs> out that i did that okay cool i didn't know y'all didn't tell me um but uh, yeah, yeah, just follow me there and holler at me, and you know I get back to people when I can and try to give everyone sincere time. So yeah, well, again, gang, if you uh, are listening to this via the podcast or watching it on YouTube, um, and you aren't inspired to go pick up Blade, I don't know what you're doing, but uh, go pick it go, up, it's go good. check it out. It look, it's so it looks good. good on you. It looks real so good. good on you. Um, well, Brian, thank you so much just for taking some time to talk about comics with me, and uh, I wish you the best. Right on, brother. You have a yeah. good one. All right, gang. So with that being said, hopefully you can find some time to curl up, grab a book, and nerd out.